Hello and welcome to the Thursday, July 13th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Don't really have a good link for it yet because it really just uh, hit uh, the internet, so to speak. Apple re-released its rapid security response update for iOS as well as for macOS. Interestingly, it's now C, as in Charlie, the letter that's being added to the operating system version. The old one was a as alpha so for example for ios once you're patched you'll see that you're running 16.5.1 and then charlie c in parentheses this letter being added to the user agent apparently was one of the problems with the original update that caused issues with some websites haven't had a chance yet, literally just installed it on my iPhone, haven't installed it yet uh, on the Mac I'm using here to record to figure out what the user agent exactly looks like with this latest update. As the prior update, it's pretty small, was I think four megabytes on my iPhone and does require a quick reboot, just a regular reboot, not one of those reboots where it reboots multiple times in order to swap out operating system images. And Pratt published another of his uh, malware analysis uh, diaries, this time looking at a current version of a form book, particular Brad is looking closer at the loader actually that uh, then installs forum book on the infected system. This particular uh, variant didn't appear to be fully functional. At least some of the files only were downloaded sort of manually. Uh, later, uh, the initial loader didn't quite uh, seem to do the trick here. The initial infection started out with uh, the usual sort of email lure. Now, one appeared to be in Spanish, if I see that correctly. The other one that Brad found was in Vietnamese. Uh, not all malicious emails are using English as their language. So that's also important to keep in mind if you are, for example, designing defenses or phishing campaigns, uh, for example. The overall infection chain was somewhat complex with multiple stages. Again, all the samples, packet captures can be found in Pratt's diary. And then we got some patch Tuesday cleanup to do essentially patches released by other vendors that I didn't cover in the patch Tuesday podcast. Adobe released updates for Adobe InDesign as well as for Adobe Cold Fusion. In particular of interest here is a vulnerability in Adobe Cold Fusion that is a deserialization vulnerability that can lead to arbitrary code execution. Adobe rates it with a CVSS score of 9.8. And FortiGuard released an update for 40 OS, 40 proxy. This update fixes a stack-based buffer overflow. Exploitation may lead to arbitrary code execution. As a workaround, if you don't want to patch, you can also disable HTTP2 support in the SSL inspection profile and a quick configuration snippet is provided as part of the advisory. And Citrix updated the Citrix Secure Access Client for Ubuntu. This essentially the, what well, used to be Citrix a Gateway VPN Client. Again, only Ubuntu is affected here. In order to exploit the vulnerability, an attacker needs to convince the victim to actually follow a specific link and then accept additional prompts. That's all Citrix has. Sounds like you need to connect to some kind of malicious SL VPN server using this particular client. Uh, not sure how feasible an attack like this is because I don't think you have a lot of sort of regular users using this client on Ubuntu. It may be really something that's more running in sort of server environments. But if an attacker is able to convince the user to jump through these hoops, well, it will give remote code execution to the attacker. 
And finally, we got updates from SonicWall. SonicWall fixed a number of different vulnerabilities, several of them critical. For example, a web service authentication bypass with a CVSS score of 9.4. There's also a post-authenticated command injection. Given that there is an authentication bypass, well, maybe it doesn't actually require authentication if you combine the two vulnerabilities. Another 9.8 CVSS score vulnerability is unauthenticated SQL injection issues. There are multiple ones here that also lead to a security a filter a bypass. Finally, the last sort of critical one here is a CAS authentication bypass. So given that there's a number of authentication bypasses, we do have unauthenticated SQL injection issues. Definitely do apply this update to your sonic walls quickly. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. In case you're here in DC and you missed uh, to pick up a sticker at the Vendor Expo over lunch today, still carry some of them around with me. So just uh, stop me and uh, I'll uh, give you a sticker if you are interested. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.